Hi, welcome back. This is the third screencast of four that demonstrate how to ingest data from into Cassandra from a relational database. In this case, it's MySQL. And in this case, we're going to have a brand new pipeline. It's a streaming pipeline. It is a pipeline that is designed to run continuously. Why would we want to do that? Well, after an initial bulk load of historical data, we want to be able to capture all the changes to our source database, the mutations, and synchronize those up with our Cassandra destination. This might be for a small period of time or maybe through a maintenance window before we can cut over to Cassandra entirely. So it's a different type of pipeline and a different pipe, type of pipeline has a different type of origin. In this case, it's our MySQL bin log origin for change data capture. And what we're going to show in this demonstration before we go into the configuration of all these things is just a running working version. So you'll see this pipeline is running. And if we go over to our CQL shell, we can take a look at our existing data. Maybe it would help if I do a clear and expand on. And we take a look at this particular movie which we loaded from our original pipeline our batch pipeline what happens then what happens while we have a running pipeline and we come to our database and we perform a mutation maybe we perform an update we had a new description for example and if i click out of it that will save what do we expect to happen we expect this stream set pipeline to process it so we can see that it has. We've got a one input record and an output. And if we follow through the stages, we'll see it land in the movies branch. Let's come back. What happens when we query for that same ID again? We have a new record. Now, the operation type and the reasoning why we have two is all explained in the tutorial itself. And we'll cover it again in the next movie where we go over a movie. <laughs> No, it's not a movie, folks, right? It's just a screencast. <laughs> we'll cover it in the next screencast where we talk about um, why we're designing our streaming pipelines in this way. You have options. This is just one of them. But we chose this one, and we'll describe that in a little bit more detail in our next screencast, as well as the written tutorial instructions. So hopefully this helps. We will now move on to the next screencast about configuration.